Okay, so we're going to talk about developing uh, object designs and doing a little bit of code for OpenSCAD and considering what to think about when you're designing a 3D printable part uh, in your mind's eye for something that's going to be a cast part in metal later. And so ultimately, we're doing the star part. It's a very simple part. Uh, we want to test to make sure that we can design the shape and then modify it so it can be improved. And right now, what we have is a baseline code. And it's very simple. It's not super pretty. We use um, a single for loop that is right here. You can see everything highlighted in red. You can also see that the object has some serious redundant errors. Okay, we didn't code it very well, and that's fine. Um, but know that this cube is just sort of a patch to make sure that we have the object we intended, right, in just a star shape. So these will all be posted to the Thingiverse files that you can find. But you do want to know that in, in this object design, we should be able to manipulate it a little bit, right? We can make eight points, and that works fine. Um, we can change the length to, let's say, something absurd, like 127. And then the object gets really, really tall. And so the star behavior is what we'd expect. Okay, but as you start to make your design, you realize there are certain things you can do to improve it. So this is the first iteration of star. And over here on the second iteration of star, you can see that we started incorporating a couple of elements. Okay, the code got a little cleaner, and there's a difference function here where we cut out a star in the back of the shape. And if you look at star one, it's just a block, right? And so star two is a little bit um, thinner and more uniform. And then we've also incorporated a stackable sprue system. So things you want to consider is right now, uh, it's just an object file, right? So you can see that this star here is star 1, and then this star here right, is the secondary star that's being subtracted from the first star. Pretty simple code. And it's not parametric. At this point, you have to manipulate each star. And so the problem with that is as you go to do your design, if we look at the back, if we were to change any aspect of this, it would give us a slightly different behavior each time. And so you want to consider all of these things as you adjust the math for subtracting star 2 right here from star 1. So in the for loop, right, which is this section here, we've integrated these little stackable triangles, okay? And the idea is that as you have more and more of these stars on top of one another, this red sprue system could allow metal to flow to the star points from the star points and create a stacked tier of an assembly, okay? The only problem is, at this point, uh, everything has to be edited. So this isn't a good final version. It's not fully parametric. There are things that need to be designed later. So what we're going to do is show you version 3, where it's relatively parametric. Um, at this point, we can change any of our dimensions. And we get some weird errors when we go super small. But once you get to reasonable dimensions, it starts to look more like a star. And when I say reasonable, I do mean something that you can print. Okay, so at this point we can start printing the object file and we can adjust things that we want to do to other numbers. And you'll see little bits of failing as we push it to the upper limits. So it's not fully parametric, but it's relatively close. And so the interesting part now is to go back and say, okay, well, how big how big a star can I make, right? Like, it does most of what I want to do. I like the thinness of the perimeter. This is a different sprue style we switched from. If we go back to star two, there's a triangle form, and you can see we're calling a cylinder right here, and we're declaring that it has three faces. But if we were to say it had four, it would be kind of rectangular, and if we were to do eight, it would start to approximate an ellipse, right? But that's because we're calling the cylinder function here, and we're giving it multiple faces. Okay. So here we've changed that function to a cube right here. 
And these numbers that were selected for the cube, um, it's 1.5 millimeters thick by 2 millimeters wide. These are dimensions that are approximations of good sprue flow dynamics, but altered so that when you go to print the object from the, the flat orientation, there's no issues about support. So these are designed to be thermoformed afterwards as part of the sprue system. And if you didn't want to do that, you could just call something like a rotate function. And then tell it to rotate 90 degrees from whatever orientation you're in. So 90 degrees. And then you'd have to move it vertically or horizontally depending on which rotation you're doing and so then there'd be a secondary translation function which you could embed up here Let's just say plus 10 you need to go the other way so minus and probably less maybe six to the point where your sprue is flat and then you get something comparable to what you have on star 2 but we're just going to go back to what we had originally. So there is our star. So ultimately the idea was to create the first star loop, design it completely parametric, and then subtract star one, right? This is our, our master star. And then star 2, this should be our difference function. So you can see that this star is being subtracted from the core. And because they're the exact same dimensions, the z offset is actually dictating the thickness that we see in this region on the printed part. So once you have all these parts designed, they're parametric, you can start to play with all the different star shapes you want, figure out which orientations work, and that gets discussed as we start to 3D print these parts and then cast them.